So today I'm gonna make another video. Uh, this video will be regarding the intake inlets that actually go into the intake box itself. Uh, I do have the cover off right now because I'm just making sure that my new split cooling mod, um, reservoir, uh, I'm making sure everything's flowing, everything's burped out. But so far the mod has been excellent. Um, I just finished running it really hard uh, and it is about 10 degrees above ambient uh, most of the time. So that is pretty good right now. It's a beautiful hot day in Texas, 100 degrees. And I usually, uh, at idling speeds, it's about 100 degrees. And it kind of goes above the 112 after doing a couple of pulls. So the issue that we're facing here today, obviously, like most uh, most vehicles or Mercedes within these years, included the M157, uh, the M278, and a couple of the six cylinders that might have the same cloth fabric intake. Um, yeah, see, it kind of falls apart. Right now, I just have them kind of hugging each other but that's not gonna that's not gonna work obviously i after a couple of bumps or something like that he's gonna fall off and i don't want it to get you know sucked in partially into the box which even though it won't do nothing because the filter will stop it but like i said i just don't i don't this is ghetto i don't want this very long uh for a long period of time the crazy thing is this one is pretty much mint i mean they're just as old as each other but the other one just decided to give off um a little bit earlier than this one I don't have a problem with this, but if I'm gonna already do the modification, I'm gonna do them to both sides. Here's what's gonna actually replace those components. I'm not certain if I want to do one intake. Uh, this actually intake is going to be able to cover, actually probably both sides. Uh, from what it says here, it can actually expand to 28 inches, uh, which is above two feet of hose. Obviously I don't need at least that, but um, if I expand them, they're gonna be kind of open veined. I kind of like the tighter vein look. I feel like it looks more OEM. So when I finish one of them, I'll kind of see where I'm at and what I like. In order for you to actually take this off, it is actually really simple. Uh, these are just clipped in. So as you can see, that's one of the stops. And then those are gonna be stops with inverted. So all you have to do is just tightly pull back. It's gonna pull off on that one. Obviously this one's gonna be in pieces. Um, and then for this one, you do the same exact thing. Just shake it until there you go comes off um, and that is what it looks like right now the same goes for the other side just pop it right off and it'll slide right off and as you can see this one is in complete condition this one might be a little tougher there you go that's what it's supposed to look like but obviously that is uh, not the case. In order to get these prepped, um, as you can see, as they already start pulling, they have like a nylon wire inside. Um, you're gonna just start pulling it off like a, I guess for lack of better words, like a fruit roll up. Um, and it'll start coming off. You might need to remove some adhesive on this before you put the new portion on. Uh, really it's not hard, it's just time consuming. So start pulling them off and then we'll get prepared for the next step. I wanted to uh, measure the inlet size here. Um, the outside diameter uh, says approximately three, uh, three inches and nine sixty-four, which kind of translates to like three inches and one eighth, uh, realistically. Um, those little uh, components that we purchased from Spectre uh, will slide right over that. Now that I've taken most of the glue or the adhesive off the actual portion of the uh, plastic connector, uh, in the kit, they're going to include uh, these rubber couplers, um, which you're going to want to do. And this one was a little crushed, but that's that's no problem. You could actually want to place the coupler within the channel uh, that you removed all the glue off. You're not going to have to reapply glue because these sit pretty tight. They're not going to move anywhere. The actual quality of the plastic piece, uh, this is a very strong um, memory. Um, I don't know. It's almost like a dry, like a dryer hose. Uh, but it is lined with uh, a metal wire uh, and is extremely uh, stiff. Uh, so this is definitely not going to uh, wither or go anywhere. So now that I have both pieces mated, uh, this is kind of what it looks like. I already like the direction it's going in. It looks relatively OEM-ish. Um, but what I notice is that obviously uh, I have too much hose and it's not going to allow it to come in here. So what I did is where the end of where that component meets or the uh, inlet, this inlet meets, it's gonna be somewhere right here. Uh, and the mouth, I measured the difference between the end uh, and the mouth, and it's gonna put us somewhere at about uh, three and a quarter. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is actually take a razor and uh, maybe a, uh, some snips and take off about uh, three inches and a quarter off of this tube. 
and then you should be able to fit this in there comfortably. The easiest way to make the cut is once you find the ridge, you gotta expand it and it's gonna cut really easy. So my tool of choice is gonna be actually this box cutter and I can probably cut it with one hand if I really wanted to. Yeah, see it's just sliding right through. So make the cut all the way around and then cut the wire if needed. Notice is when you'll start cutting, it's gonna continue to go up and up and up and up and up because the razor is actually just following the metal wire inside. And this is when you'll need these to snip that component uh, down the middle. Now that the cut is made, you can go ahead and start the assembly process, which obviously is just putting the other component back into that coupler, making sure everything's good and sealed here. Um, as I said, I'm not gonna put any adhesive on here. Um, if you want it to be more of a permanent thing, you can put a bead of adhesive and LR glue or something of that nature, but this thing is definitely not going anywhere. Um, and I, I really do like the way it looks. I think it's, it's uh, OEM-esque. Uh, I'd rather go this direction than the cloth ones anytime. There you have it, uh, two intake mods, uh, obviously one for left and one for right, uh, done for less than $24 after tax. Uh, I'll put everything in the video when it comes to the pricing of the filters and the part number, that way you can do this yourself. Uh, this whole process took me no more than about 30 minutes to do, uh, in and out and recording at the same time. Um, I'm not gonna say this is gonna gain any power for the car, uh, may or may not, that wasn't my interest for doing the intake mod. Uh, it was just to make sure that I didn't have to deal with that messed up intake part on a constant basis. It looked kind of ugly under the car and I wanted to let it look a little bit better. Um, but I think this is a good option for the price, especially being that there's not too many uh, available aftermarket intake uh, for this particular model uh, anywhere near this price or any, at, at the price at all. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching.